If you find that you buy yourself a package of peacock hull and it's busting and splitting on you all the time, the probability is it's very old. And I would pretty much, if I had that, I, I would dump it. You know, peacock hull should be kind of bright and resilient and, you know, should have a fair amount of strength to it. If it, if it just breaks on you like that, well, get rid of it. <coughs> Another little trick to the trade is this. I may only want to incorporate, for example, four strands of peacock hull for the body of the fly. But from a safety perspective, I'm going to tie in six. Because if one breaks on me, I still got two more spares to recover the loss of the fact I've lost that one. Because it's easy material to, to break out in the first place. All right, we got the uh, hull pretty much, excuse me, the thread pretty much center wise. Now, there's two ways to tie peacock hull in the right and the wrong way. The right way is to tie it in by the tips, not those thick buds. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. Okay, cut those square. That's the first thing. And set them in so that pretty much your, your, your cut section comes to the point where when you bring your thread forward, they're going to be covered over and you're not going to build up unnecessary bulk at the eye. And reverse the thread down, just trapping down those peacock hole fibers as you go. And then reverse the thread back up. And as you see, we trap those down also as we go. But what we did is actually to build up a fairly even underbody of the fly thereafter that we're going to wind the hole over. Okay, now, I always remember this. It is common for, shall we say, books to tell you that, or whatever, oh, peacock hole, twist it together, form a bunch. Don't do that. If you do that, you destroy the effect of buzz that you get in peacock hole. What you should do is wind it in a square angle, like this. Now, let me explain another thing to you, too. Is that if you tie it in by the tips, as you wind that forward, you're actually pulling those little minute barbs out at right angles to the stem. If you tie that in by the butt ends, as you're winding it and you're pulling it through your fingers, you're compressing those little barbs to the stem. Okay. Same thing, balance the bobbin on the finger. And we're not taking tremendous tension here, but what we're doing, we're just working up the body of the fly, nice and even. As you come up the body of the fly, you can visually see <coughs> the buzz effect of this hull. Let me get real close on that shot. You see, it's really flyaway fairy, what I call a flyaway fair effect. If you twisted that hull together, there's no way you're gonna get that effect. It's going to be a tight, bunched up ball. Fine, that's okay for stonefly nymphs and stuff like that, I guess. But, you know, that's not what I'm looking for, for the effects of a good uh, wet fly or soft tackle body. Yeah. Same thing applies, you know. If you want to go in the same direction as that you wound the body, that's fine. If you want to go back through the opposing direction, likewise, that's fine. The difference is the visual effect that you will see. Tie in at least two more strands than you need, and if you happen to break one along the way, you've got another one or two to back you up. So there you go. That's that's really what you're looking for for a good peacock hole body fly. That real nice buzz effect.